In recent years, we've seen several tech billionaires back environmentally friendly innovations in a bid to tackle climate change, but will these famous innovators really be the ones to bring about change? Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and other leading entrepreneurs often make the headlines for their groundbreaking technologies, unexpected ventures, and charitable donations, frequently making investments as large as some countries' GDPs. Want to know about it? Well, stay tuned to the video and watch the video till the end. Hello guys, welcome to Bezos Space. Hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications to get new updates about Jeff Bezos. Hit the like button to show your support and in today's video, we're going to discuss Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk just humiliated by Bill Gates. So without any further ado, let's begin. If governments won't act quickly enough on climate change, who will? Enter the new breed of billionaire philanthropists. Their goal is to use their influence and money to push the boundaries of science and technology for society's benefit. Tech billionaires Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Bill Gates consider climate change appears to be prime on the agenda. On the other hand, some are questioning that whether they're focusing on their efforts in the right areas. Elaborately speaking about three richest billionaires who ranked in the top five richest people on the planet, they are all trying to develop new technologies which can reduce the world's carbon dioxide emissions. Elon Musk tweeted Thursday he'll be donating $100 million towards a prize for best carbon capture technology. The Tesla and SpaceX boss didn't provide any specifics beyond the tweet, but said details next week. Cash rewards for innovation prizes are new. For example, the X Prize Foundation is a nonprofit which facilitates cash prizes to incentivize innovation. Musk is largely focused on funding carbon capture technologies, Gates is particularly bullish on nuclear energy, and Bezos has created a dedicated Bezos Earth Fund. All of them believe that technology has a major role to play in tackling climate change, and they're doing their utmost to ensure they're pushing the boundaries when it comes to climate tech. They basically think in the Iron Man way, which is that we can build the technology to innovate ourselves out of it. Christian Kroll, the founder and CEO of search engine Ecosia, told CNBC on a video call, adding that they should be focusing more on planting trees. No technology will ever get there, he said in reference to trees. And on top of that, you're getting so many things for free. You're getting fertile soil, you're doing something against the biodiversity crisis, and you're helping the water cycle so you have less droughts and less floods. This September, Gates announced that he had secured over $1 billion in funding from seven U.S. firms to combat climate change. The funding from Microsoft, BlackRock, General Motors, American Airlines, Boston Consulting Group, Bank of America, and ArcelorMittal will be managed by his organization Breakthrough Energy, which he established in 2016. Gates hopes to drive a new industrial revolution through the organization's Breakthrough Energy Catalyst project to help the world avoid a climate disaster through investment in carbon capture, green hydrogen, long-duration energy storage, and sustainable aviation fuel. Half the technology needed to get to zero emissions either doesn't exist yet or is too expensive for much of the world to afford, Gates stated, suggesting Catalyst is designed to change that and provide an effective way to invest in our clean technology future. In India, its richest citizen Mukesh Ambani has pledged to take his energy giant net zero by 2035, an undertaking he will fulfill by switching to renewable sources and converting carbon dioxide emissions into useful products and chemicals. Australia's Andrew Forrest has established Fortescue Future Industries as part of Fortescue Metals with a mandate to invest billions in green hydrogen projects in Queensland and NSW, New South Wales, and to take the mining group of carbon neutral by 2040. Carbon Capture, Utilization and Storage or Sequestration CCUS, which is often shortened to carbon capture, is a process of removing carbon emissions to either store or reuse in order to prevent the emissions from being released into the atmosphere. Excess carbon dioxide gases block heat from escaping the Earth's atmosphere and cause global warming. Since the Industrial Revolution, human activity has increased atmospheric carbon dioxide by 47% and is the most important long-lived forcing of climate change, according to NASA. It's widely known that trees are among the most efficient carbon capture machines on Earth. They remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere through a chemical reaction known as photosynthesis, where they turn the gas into energy that they use to grow. Empress trees, for example, can absorb about 103 tons of carbon a year per acre. Twelve of the top 20 climate solutions relate to either agriculture or forests, according to climate nonprofit Project Drawdown, which is based in San Francisco. Recently, Britain's Prince William underscored the importance of investing in nature to tackle climate change and protect our planet. We must invest in nature through reforestation, sustainable agriculture, and supporting healthy oceans because doing so is one of the most cost-effective and impactful ways of tackling climate change, he said. It removes carbon from the atmosphere, helps build more resilient communities, tackles biodiversity loss, and protects people's livelihoods.
This is crucial if our children and grandchildren are to live sustainably on our precious planet. Last year, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos pledged $10 billion to launch his Bezos Earth Fund, which will provide grants to scientists battling climate change. He encouraged other companies to donate to the fund, stating that climate change is the biggest threat to our planet and I want to work alongside others both to amplify known ways and to explore new ways of fighting the devastating impact of climate change on this planet we all share. And on the same day Gates announced his new funding, Bezos revealed that his Earth Fund would be contributing $1 billion to conserve and protect vulnerable areas of the world. The announcement included statements of support from world leaders such as UN Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, Colombian President Ivan Duke Marquez, and US Special Presidential Envoy for Climate John Kerry. So far, carbon capture has been a disappointment. The story of CCUS has largely been one of the unmet expectations. Its potential to mitigate climate change has been recognized for decades, but deployment has been slow and so has had only a limited impact on global CO2 emissions, the International Energy Agency says. But that could be changing. There are clear signs that CCUS may be gaining traction. The IEA says, the U.S. federal government supports research and development of carbon capture both in looking for and assessing the viability of geologic spaces to store carbon and in developing technology to better understand what happens to carbon when it's stored for long periods of time. According to the Department of Energy, Jack Kelly, the founder of Open Climate Fix and a former researcher at Alphabet-owned AI lab DeepMind, said that a mix of approaches is required. I think we need a wide range of interventions, both tech and reforestation, he said. Open Climate Fix announced Tuesday that it has raised over 500,000 pounds, 689,000 US dollars, from Google. Dave Waltham, a professor in the Department of Earth Sciences at Royal Holloway University of London, said that natural climate solutions like tree planting can be viewed as emergency first aid. They buy us time to develop permanent solutions, he said. New forests, for example, absorb CO2 for 40 years or so and then reach an equilibrium. Buying time this way is immensely valuable as we still cannot produce completely climate-neutral food, steel, energy, and concrete. Trees and reforestation, however, are relatively low down on the tech billionaire agenda list, according to Kroll. While the tech billionaires wouldn't necessarily be able to solve climate change by planting more trees, they could have a massive impact if they dedicated more of their capital to the matter, he said. The use of a contest to drive innovation in carbon capture technology is certainly a very good idea, said Ahmed F. Goniam, a professor at MIT who has a research interest in CO2 capture technologies. Innovation in carbon capture technology is needed for reducing the cost and complexity of the technology and improving the overall efficiency, he told CNBC by email. Now that we've come to the end of this video, I want to thank you for sticking with me and I'd love to know what you think of it. Just comment down below. Also, if you like this video, make sure you like it and stay safe. Today's video is over, but if you want to see more, there's one on your screen right now and there are a few more fun videos coming soon. I'll see you in the next video.